Today brings with it a bit of a combo video for you. First off, we have some news regarding the MPD report for the month of May 2017, and we also have some rumblings as to what NVIDIA are up to with the Tesla Volta V100. Let's kick things off with the MPD report, shall we? We have the full report for May of 2017, which tells us not only who has won the ever-ongoing console war this month, but of course, a picture of how the industry did for the month of May 2017. So, of course, it is very much a three-horse race now. The Nintendo Switch doing quite well for itself. It had a very strong showing last month. That being April, obviously, we were always a month behind when it comes to MPD. But despite that, it was the PS4 that was once again the best-selling console in May. However, that's not, the, uh, not all that MPD had to say. They said, quote, the combined install base of the PS4 and Xbox One did beat the combined base of previous generation platforms by 29%, and overall hardware spending was up by 7%, though it was down by 11% year on year when compared to the same period of 2016. But instead of a little snippets, let's look at the full report. As consumers in the US spent $542 million on game-related hardware, software and accessories. Again, that is down 11% from the same period in 2016. But again, hardware sales are showing a touch of growth again, 7%. The total hardware spend was 147 million and console software was 271 million which is actually down 20% and PC software was also suffering quite nastily this month down 48% at 12 million however. Accessories were up 1% at $112 million. So basically it was the decline in software that kind of brought down this month in general. The MPD analyst Matt Piscatella basically said that the release slate when compared to last year was a bit lighter on the games which obviously led to less software spend. The, uh, the biggest drop we saw apart from the PC software, I mean generally speaking, was 20% in terms of the co console software. It's a fairly significant chunk of change, and obviously 48% on the PC software is not exactly easy going either. However, he said, quote, Total video game spending in May 2017, which includes hardware, software and accessories, fell 11% versus a year ago. To 542 million, spending growth in hardware and accessories was offset by a decline in software spending driven by a lighter new release slate when compared to May 2016. But you might ask, okay, we know what caused the software decline, but what about the hardware increase? Well, Piscatello continued in saying that basically this was down to the Nintendo Switch. He said, quote, Nintendo Switch continues to be the primary catalyst for hardware spending gains as it has since launching in March 2017. It has basically filled a bit of a hole in the market. As we've actually seen, so, uh, sorry, Handheld consoles declining in, in sales while hardware spending on consoles is growing. So you can, the, the Switch is kind of fitting into that slot between the two, I guess you could say, and kind of filling the positions of both. And just to finish up with the MPD stuff, we do have a little bit of software for you. We have a top, well, they've got the top 20 here, but I'm just going to go top 10 because, you know, I'll be here till Christmas otherwise. But we do have Injustice 2. This is overall, by the way, not for any particular platform. Mario Kart 8, GTA 5, somehow still in the charts. Breath of the Wild at 4, Prey at 5, Ghost Recon Wildlands at 6, Shadow of Valencia, uh, Fire Emblem Echoes at 7, NBA 2K17 at 8, MLB 17 The Show at number 9, and Overwatch is at number 10. Now, a few of those do have no digital sales, and Overwatch has no digital sales included. Some of them do, some of them don't. For example, Mario Kart doesn't have digital, neither does Zelda, neither does Prey, and neither does Fire Emblem, and as I said, Overwatch as well. So do keep that in mind that this is a kind of a mixed bag of whether or not it has the digital stuff included or not. Obviously, previously, MPD was purely retail only, but obviously they have started to kind of expand and include the digital market, which I think is wise given how many people now are buying their games digitally. Even if it's, of course, a bit more of a pain on console than it is on PC, digital gaming is still growing rather nicely. However, moving on to our second but slightly shorter topic for today, we have some news as to what NVIDIA are doing when it comes to the Tesla Volta V100. 
Now you may recall, a little while ago we saw some teases that the Tesla Volta will be getting a PCIe based variant. Now obviously there is already, well there is already announced a card that has their brand new NVLink technology. And in case you're unaware, NVLink basically is obviously where the card literally plugs into the motherboard like you normally would with a PCIe, but it offers between 5 to 12 times the speed over PCIe and is just for graphics cards. And with this in mind, it's obviously going to require its own special hardware, so the PCIe version does work on other systems. You would just get, have to get a motherboard that is meant for that particular system. You could use, just for example, the Ryzen-based Epic motherboard. Now, like the other Teslas, this PCIe version does have 5120 CUDA cores, but they are running at slightly slower clock speeds, meaning that, of course, the performance when compared to NVLink is lower, but it also has a lower TDP, which obviously means less power consumption and less heat output, which is definitely a concern for any build, even one that is for a server like the Tesla Volta most likely would be. Now, obviously, this particular card is not meant for gamers, but they are still working on They are still getting new models out there, and... Obviously points to an interesting future for the consumer version of Volta, assuming it ever releases. Now these particular ones are using HBM2, but the Volta for GeForce, which obviously will be the gamer versions, are rumoured to not be making use of HBM2. Again, this hasn't been confirmed, just want to stress that. There are rumblings that it might use GDDR5X or maybe even GDDR6 as I've discussed in the past. Nvidia are apparently concerned about the cost and availability of HBM2. Obviously that's not really a concern with Tesla Volta because it is for high-end compute scenarios like deep learning and servers and all that sort of thing. It's not meant for you or I, it's meant for the you know server farms, big companies, again deep learning, that sort of stuff. So it's not as big a concern for NVIDIA to the cost and availability because A, you know, there's not going to be that many people buying them and of course the cost, well, it's already very expensive and getting rid of HBM2 probably isn't going to have a dramatic, drastic impact on that given the insane specs of these things. So, there you have it. A little bit of a combo video for you today, as I said. Thank you very much for watching as always. Your support is highly appreciated. I'll see you next time.